This conference will now be recorded. The American flag for us. We will have the Pledge of Allegiance before we start. Yep. Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible. And justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Yep. Okay. Caller two, uh, if you just identify who you are. Right here, right me, me. You talk to me right now, Mr. Vitali. No, no, we have, we have, we know who you are. We know your name. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Caller oh. So would that be Boy, Linda? Linda? Is that Linda? Yes. Okay. All right. So we just, we, we just like to know who's there and and what have you. So we're gonna. Um. We're going to start uh, with um, hearing number. Let's see. <clears throat> Mr. Marino, 2020-028 is the hearing number. And that is for Boy, I got three I got three properties here. I don't know which one. I know. That's one thirty. Oh yeah, here no is it two zero two zero days zero two nine. No. We're gonna start with zero two eight. Okay, wait a minute. One thirteen North Turnpike. I am going to swear you in and that will cover the three hearings. All right. All right, all right. So I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. You do? I do, so help me God. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, when was the last, were you here not too long ago with this property? No, not at all. I haven't no. seen you guys for a long time. Okay. All right, I just... Uh, I, I'm just checking. So, you uh, you put a market value of twenty thousand dollars on. Is that right? Twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah. Okay. And the town currently has a market value of forty nine thousand seven hundred dollars on the property. That correct? I, you know, I got to look for it, but I, you, you got it right in front of you. Uh, that, that is correct, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. 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 That's I, it, Mr. Jackson. Also, that's it. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, tell us, tell us why you feel its uh, value is is only twenty thousand right. dollars. Okay, I I have uh, in the piece of paper here that. Uh, the property type says commercial, but the property type is a DD, design district. It's in the corner of uh, North uh, Turnpike Road and uh, Ridgeland. Across the street, you have the water pump. Uh, with the design district, you gotta stay so many feet away from the right, so many feet away from the left. Uh, if you do build there, you're going to put a very small building. And uh, special with this situation we're in now, uh, you people have it for commercial, but it's actually it's a DD, design district. Uh, nobody wants to go like in the middle of uh, nowhere. You know, you know, with the, Mr. Vitale, you had one and four residents. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the, with the site. And... Uh, uh, it's hard to make it go. I've been having this property for the past uh, uh, long time. I don't rem cannot tell you a number because I won't be accurate, but I own it for a long time. I was in, I, I tried to rent it to lease it. Nobody can. 
uh, they, everybody went out empty handed because the town planner didn't don't allow this, don't allow that. And uh, it, I own the property today. I just you know just pay taxes on it. And especially with the pandemic that we incur right now and commercial property uh, de decreasing in, in value and a lot of empty stores and you know, I don't have to tell you all the restaurants most like well out of business and I, I have a, a, another property that I, I have been correct collect the rent for the past four months and I don't want to and I understand they just uh, can't afford to pay and if I evict them they'd be empty so I'd rather make believe that it's occupied but I don't get nothing so uh, because if they move and I put a, if a rent sign it's going to be for nobody's going to rent it I don't know if, uh, you know I go, you guys know what's going on right now unfortunately Let's hope that we go back to normal with the help of God and things get better. I have nothing to do. I can't do nothing right now with the property, period. Nothing. <clears throat> Mr. Jackson, um, I see this property w was assessed at $5,000 and, and it increased to $34,800. Um, I mean, I, I don't know, five thousand dollars. What what was it under when it was only valued at five thousand dollars? So for years, Mr. Chairman, this property flew below the radar, if you will, fell through the cracks. Be another way to put it, um, it was believed at one time to be not buildable, unbuildable, uh, and this time around, when the reevaluation came through, uh, it came to light that we should look closer at it. We did, we determined that it's very difficult to build. As Mr. Marino stated, you have to put a very small building as a small building envelope. Otherwise you will need variances and other types of uh, special approvals in order to really fully develop the site. That being said, we valued it as it is. In other words, a normal building a lot would be $100,000 or thereabouts. This one here we've adjusted uh, just on the condition factor, we reduced it by 35% of what we normally would have assessed it for to, to account for the fact that it can only have a very small building. Uh, is, is it commercial or is it, or it, uh, what, it's what design zone? district. Pardon? It's the design district four. So it is buildable, but it's just a matter of finding the right type of uh, improvement to place on that lot. But but buildable as as commercial on North Turnpike. Well, within the design district, I, I'd have to double check that. But anything that would be allowed in the design district, I think that may include residential. I'm not I'm not quite sure. But the design district allows a fair amount of flexibility. Okay. As opposed to strictly just commercial. Nope. No, 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 no. Uh, <clears throat> if, if I may speak, Mr. Vitali, I'm just waiting for you singing. Sing you. Wait for me to what? Uh, if you give me your key, I can respond to me. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can respond, please. Please. Yeah. I you know that you cannot build a house there. In order to build a house, it's got to be residential. They are, on the design district. They allow you rooming houses. Uh, in order to, to build a residential house on on DD, you have to go for a variance to make it commercial uh, residential, and it won't be a good site to build a house. Uh, you're a, you're a wonderful resident, you know with the lattice that's on a residential part on a commercial part when you put a little building in the middle of nowhere we're at closest street from the uh, the town property that they department of public work they used to down the cement and uh cross stone and stuff <laughs> who's, go, who's gonna go there so i just have to all uh keep it I'm 74 years old, although I know I longer can keep it, and 
hopefully in the future they change the zoning or something. Uh, I just but uh, design district you cannot build a house. And even if it, if you change it to residential, it won't be a site where you can put a nice residential house there. In the corner of Ridgeland and Northern Park, you have the water pump right next to you. You have a trailer park right behind you, the Sony Acres, whatever, it's a bunch of uh, trailer parks, and you have a trailer parks on Closer Street. And also, I think it's wetlands too. <laughs> uh, when the when the river overflows, there is water going to uh, anyway. Well, so I mean, All right. for speculation value, somewhere out in the future, it's gonna it's gonna have a value. Today, we know you know um, the situation. It's certainly you know before you had an you had an assessed value of five thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, which put a market value on it of of uh, you know yeah. seven thousand dollars. I mean, that's I understand. Not, that that's not correct. I mean, it's worth it's worth certainly more than that. Um, but the prop, the the land doesn't bring, doesn't bring me income. I have to right. I have to add them on an on an insurance in case somebody uh, trespasses or gets hurt. I have to pay insurance. I have to pay taxes. And there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing I could do it. it uh, prior, and I think I can do special now, and I think you can do with it. Yeah. I already told you that it won't be no good for a residential putting a small building in the middle of nowhere. I don't know who the hell is going to rent it. I'm in this situation. You guys uh, uh, pretty sure you know more than me, and uh, you people have a better judgment than me. I, I just don't want to uh, interfere yeah, I, with... I, uh, I mean, we had we had to do something because it, you know, assessed at five thousand is just not. Uh, I understand, I understand, but I mean, if I could get some money out of there, if I could get some income, I put it for rent. I give it to a real estate many times, and I always come out empty-handed. Now so, we got a pandemic; <laughs> things go up. I, you know, how are you going to survive that way? So currently, well, anyway, I leave it up, gentlemen. Currently, it's you know market value the town has on it a forty nine seven, um, yeah. You know, like Mr. Jackson said, it, it it could be worth a lot more than that if if the right thing, the right time, what have you. I mean, I think we we we've applied the fair doctrine right now for you know what's going on in in the world with the pandemic and and rentals and leases like that. I I, I think maybe we could give you a, you know a little bit of relief from the forty nine seven. Um, do I hear any of the members with with possible, you know, um, uh, motion concerning Mr. that? Yeah, make a motion to reduce the market value to forty thousand dollars. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, so that's that's twenty. Twenty-eight thousand dollars assessed. Correct. Forty forty thousand market value. Uh, all in all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna the, move on. The, the only one that can help us, Mr. Vitali, would be Mr. Bonamico. Tell me, put a bank there. Nice little bank, and the people can go and bank the money and everything. Uh, Mr. Jackson right. got a lot of it, so he could put it'd be closer to where Mr. Jackson lives. A drive up ATM. Yeah, call Mr. Mr. Bonamigo, he can do that. <laughs> it'd be good for the town and it'd be good for me and then and then you can go even higher on the freaking uh, taxes. At least go. I have money some money to pay with. But right now what I'm gonna pay with weeds. Okay, we're going to move on to your next application, 2020-029. And that is... Oh, all right. 120 Constitution Street. Right. You're at 150000 You You say that your, your appeal is based because the taxes are too high. So let's, let's see yeah. where we are. Yes, Mr. Vitale. So, uh, 
prior prior assessment was 131,300 and mm -hmm. now the assessment is 141,900 <laughs> yep which puts a market value of $202,714,000 on the property. You you say uh, it's only worth one hundred and fifty. dollars um, So let me... All right. The, the, let me tell you something about what's going on with that, with that house. Okay. The, the lady on the first floor, she has cancer, and I'm behind on the rent, but... About three months. I don't have the heart to. You can even evict them out, evict them. And uh, I, I, I don't know what to, what to say. Uh, yeah. The lady on the second floor is a single mom with a, with a son, and uh, she doesn't work full time, part time, and she's also behind on the rent. I, I mean, uh, I understand that the, 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 the life has got to go on, things go up. But I'm in a situation, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Vitali, that uh, right now we go through this pandemic and not everybody, everybody is hurting. Yeah, and I mean, with the law that you cannot evict them because of the pandemic, I have a tenant that hasn't paid rent since August, no, in this house and another house. And today, this, the lady that lives on the second floor, I'm talking about uh, 115 South Col South Colony Road. Mr. Jackson knows that. The, she called the cops because she he was screaming and banging on the ground. And uh, the cops went there. The, the, she thought he was killing somebody. And uh, he went there and, and that the guy was on drugs. And, it, you know, we live in a very, very difficult time. So... so uh, the government has got the right to go up on the rents and everything, uh, on the taxes and everything, but the landlords right now, they're hurting bad. Yeah. Are you going to survive that way? I just don't know. And yeah, I'm not the judge. You guys can do what's best. That's all. Yeah. We we understand that. We all are, are uh, watching that very closely. Uh, anybody, you know, uh, that's... Yeah, we are in the best... It, it, it's a problem, but if we go to the value of the house, all right, in today's market, a two-family house on Constitution Street uh, at 202,000 market value, uh, that that's a that's a fair price. I mean, prior to the last reval, the house had a had a value of about 188,000. So yeah. that's a fourteen thousand dollar increase. Um, in, in, I see, that's too much. That's a, that's a little too much. I see other people nearby that they have an increase of five thousand, six thousand. I don't understand why fifteen thousand, almost fifteen thousand that house. The house has got fourteen hundred square feet, seven hundred square feet on the second floor, and seven hundred square feet on the first floor. Together, it's fourteen hundred square feet. It's cheap made. It's in the corner. It's got wetlands. You got the Constitution uh, condominium right next to it. I mean, if you had a problem that you just went up five thousand, I don't understand why mine had to go up fifteen thousand all at once. I, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, maybe, but I'm not an assessor. I'm not. A, you guys are in the government, and the government is for the people, and the people got to. It's for the government. We all got we all got to pitch in, but whatever happens, it happens. I cannot judge. Correct. That and hard. and uh, thank you for that. That uh, you know. Um, well, this is it. That's what it is. I mean, you know, uh, the reval based upon prices of houses. Uh, of October 1st of 2020 uh, have gone up. I mean, it just, just they've gone up, but. Um, I, I just can't go up on the rent. And they can't even pay what, what they'd be paying before. How can I go up? I can't go up. 
Usually the way it works, when uh, the government go up on a, on a taxes, the landlord goes up on a, on a tenant. Correct. But I can't go up. You can check with them. I just can't go up. One lady got cancer. The other one doesn't work full time. She yep. says, she says, I don't know. What I I, I, all right. I, I understand. But, um, so, you know, we, we went up uh, and, and we'll, uh, we, we've, thank you for your appeal. We've listened. We, you know, calculated how much it went up. And uh, maybe the board has some recommendation to. Uh... Mr. Chairman, I have a, a motion to reduce the market value to $193,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, Mr. Vitali. I you, right. you 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 uh, we have you we have. I have my trust in you people. You people represent the government. And this government here is the best in the world. Everybody wants to come in. I came in here in nineteen sixty six. But I, I had roots. My grandfather's about to work in the subways in New York. I had two uncles dying in the World War Two, a cousin dying in Vietnam. I swear to my, my daughter, she's in the grave. I tried to enlist too. When it was the Vietnam War, they didn't, didn't take me because I was too old. But I, I am an American, 100% American. I want you to know that. I have a little accent. That's okay. Little, little, I have a little accent. The no Italian problem. people have, have been pioneers in this land. We've here to build uh, and make, make this country better. Okay, so Thank we're you. gonna um, we're gonna. Uh, this is your last one, right? Number you have three. Yeah, I got another one too. Yeah. Oh, there's another yeah. one. Too. Okay, so we're we're gonna do hearing 2020-030. All right. The address is 40 North Turnpike Road, Wallingford. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. You uh, have put a val market value of $180,000 on it. And currently, I put 180. I don't know. I don't remember. I got to tell you. You did remember. 40 North Turnpike, 180. And uh, <coughs> and and uh, the town's market value was 251 thousand six hundred dollars. So, uh, so prior to the reval, prior to the reval, the house was two hundred and thirty thousand four hundred twenty-eight dollars. So again, I mean, the house has gone up. Um, oh. Twenty twenty one thousand yeah. uh, dollars. Okay, but it's not. It's. I mean, it was valued at, at more than one hundred eighty bef before. So. Uh, I understand, it, Mr. Mitali. This you 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 are one of a resident, and uh, I live right on Route One Fifteen, the corner of Stetson Street. I hope uh, the, 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 the town, the state will put a, a lie here. In this house here, when I got out of the house, I, I, I can't get in, a, in a, a turnpike right away. The traffic is unbearable. Looks like I, I, I live right outside. <clears throat> it's not, it's not a, a pleasant place for you to live in, believe me. Uh, I, I, years ago, I rented it, I had trouble renting it, so I decided to move in, because that's the only way you get ahead in life. You know, you, 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 you suffer in a way, and uh, you have a, the other property, I could have lived in, a, in a, a Constitution Street and uh, rent here, but it's rent, more rentable Constitution Street because the location is in here. Uh, 
I wish they put a lie here uh, one of those days because uh, it's unbelievable. You can't get on uh, Route 150 and go downtown from here to, right away. I have to take my time and sometimes wait 10, 15 minutes to get out. What can I say? Then you guys, uh, you know, you know, you guys know where the property is. Uh, you guys have a better judgment than I do, and uh, I, I think it was too much the the increase. I mean, I can see in a nice residence, and it, and it's uh, I cannot make this place commercial because it's in the corner of Stetson. And when you have uh, when your house uh, that's on a commercial property on a commercial street, and it's in the corner, they will never make you convert into commercial, which, which makes sense, because that, if you make it, if you that turn this out commercial, we'll ruin, we'll ruin the residential street, that's Petson Street. So they can never be made commercial. So I'm kind of forced to live here, in order to make ends meet. And, uh, it, it, it's you know as a resident, as you see, it, it says residential, and I am on Route 150, and it's residential. It, you know, to go up for twenty thousand dollars and once in uh, it's a residential. That's the nice residential area. I can see that, but on Route 150, I, I just, uh, the, in my opinion, anyway, which uh, that doesn't mean it makes me right. You have uh, Mr. Jackson there, which is a very, very, very knowledgeable gentleman. You have Mr. Bonamico and Mr. Avery. You guys use your, your judgment. I okay. live in a commercial I... and I'm and I, and, I, and uh, the property type it's a residential. Going up, going up on a residential, the, the, like uh, if it would have been um, South Main or. Uh, uh, a better street like South Willesley, North Willesley, maybe yes. But go up some, that much on, on Route 150 for a residential, you, you know, I think they just, it's too much. I think. But then where am I? I'm uh, I'm a soldier. You're the captain, Mr. Vitale. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think um, the board members have reviewed have listened. Uh, uh, they understand where your house is. They uh, they understand what you've said. Um, do I hear any recommendations from the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation uh, motion to reduce the market value to two hundred and thirty nine thousand. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, so you have one more? No. Uh, no, I, no, the, the one I, I, I uh, let's you, stop here, no. You only have three? Yes, I have three, yeah. Okay, so uh, hopefully, um, you're able to uh, do something with that property, hopefully your tenants, are capable of doing more to um, help pay the rent. Um, and we thank you for, you know, um, your appeals I, with us and, and we, you know, we understand your situation, so. Mr. Vitali and uh, members of the board, Mr. Jackson, my regards to all of you and thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me. <clears throat> And thank you very much for what you was able to do. Thank you. And uh, I I beg you, please try to stay safe. Wear the mask and get a vaccine when it comes. And stay alive. Life is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. You'll be getting paperwork from the, the assessor's office. Thank you, Mr. Vitali. How old are you now, Mr. Vitali? I don't want to be, I don't want to be not in How old are you? I'll be 65 in July. You're still a young man. God. <laughs> I'll be 74 in October. And I don't want to die yet. I don't want to die. No, you're not going I to. I get up in the morning. Life is beautiful. Yes.
Okay, we have uh, somebody waiting for uh, their turn. So have a good evening. Tom, I said them. I told, told them I said hello too. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, let's back up. Thank you for waiting. Um, I think we got to back up to hearing number 2020-036. Hello. Linda Moyles. Yes. So I'm going to swear you in. I hereby okay. solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Thank you. Okay. So this is concerning your home at 31 Hickory Street, Hickory Court. Mm -hmm. You placed a mm -hmm. market value of $120,000 on it. Uh, classified as low income, shouldn't appreciate at a higher rate than other properties at every revaluation. Um, so, Mr. Jackson, I'm going to have you explain um, a little bit uh, the calculation uh, for this. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, so within this development, um, there are three types of homes. There are low-income uh, homes, which are restricted for sale uh, to uh, persons of uh, low income. And then there are moderate income homes, restricted to sale to persons of moderate income. And then there are market rate homes that can sell at, you know, at whatever the market will bear. Now, these homes come with a deed restriction that lasts for 50 years. So, they cannot sell for any more than that deed restriction allows. In this case, it is affordable, low income. There is a formula that we apply in determining the maximum, and that's the key word, the maximum allowable sale price for this home, according to the, the formula. And the formula is part of the deed restriction. The maximum amount this house could sell for is 179000 $300. Now, um, even if someone wanted to pay more, these boils couldn't sell it for more than that. So that's the maximum amount. Now, what you also have to understand, and Ms. Moyles will tell you more about it, I suppose. She can tell you more about her house than anyone else would know. But if there are defects within the property, if there are other factors, someone might have a wet basement or they may have other problems with the property that even affect the value even below that that maximum amount. So, 179, 300 is it? So, so as it, as it is right now at 183.9, uh, that number uh, is too high. We're, we're already over the maximum Correct. just based on the formula alone. So, there's certainly some sort of adjustment should be considered. So, so uh, already you know we're uh, going going to adjust. The value to one uh, it should be no more than one seventy nine three yeah okay yeah wait a minute. I just and I just con then consider yeah. if there are other factors then that's that's up to the board to consider yeah one seventy nine three is what the market value is going to be um, on the property the prior year um it was uh, the prior reval was 165.571. Okay, so uh -huh. what is the condition of your of your home? I mean, we've already you know Fair, we're, we're already going to take it down to 179. So tell us tell us a little bit more. Okay, so first of all, um, I considered the increase last time um, uh, appealable you know, my fault if I didn't. Uh, and I also want to say that in general, um, I know I'm restricted to this formula, but I, I, I feel the need to say that um, in general, um, 
condos, this is considered a condo, a freestanding condo, and condos didn't go up at the same rate um, as this unit, you know, these low income affordable units did. The moderate units went up at exactly the same assessment value, not same percentage, but same assessment dollars. And the market rate units went down. Um. In, you know, in this complex. I, uh, you know, again, uh, do you have any of that information? I, I don't yeah, I don't have yeah. I don't have the market yeah, value no, I, all, I, all the I, units in there. I mean you're right and you're saying that but it, you know Yeah, I, I know, I know. I um realize I should have and I had intended to today and I didn't do it. Um back to the condition. I have a major crack in my foundation from the inside to the outside. I emailed you um late this afternoon i emailed the three of you um pictures and you know the estimated costs of repair you know and it i have water in the basement for that reason i have another crack on the other side that's not as severe but water does come in there also uh So, Mr. Jackson, I mean, I don't, again, correct, there's moderate low income units, there's normal, in, you know, units over there. I mean, have they gone up varying or have they gone up equally? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have a comps out of, out of the, you know, um, development to say. So, so the, you know, the low and moderate, we just simply follow the formula. Market rate apartment uh, condos may come down because they may have been considerably higher last time around. I mean, I, I I'm just speculating on that. I don't have any yeah. example to present tonight, but I'm just giving you a reason why they may have come down. I think more important factor that's more important is this, this you know the, uh, the crack in the foundation. That's, that's I, I am yeah. aware condition, of that. condition of her actual unit has a yeah will have bearing. Uh, I mean, to start at 179.3 and then adjust for, if, if you feel it's it's uh, appropriate to adjust for that crack, then I think that would be an appropriate way to go. From our point of view. Okay. Let, um... mm -hmm. Okay. Without, um, without having you know comps and things like you know things of that nature uh i i think we um you know we'll give you some relief on condition um okay do i hear uh any board member with a Mr. recommendation Chairman, i make a motion to reduce the market value to one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. I'll see you next year. <laughs> okay. Uh, you only get one time in five years, so in in a, a reval, so. But. Uh, I I disagree. Mr. Jackson. One appeal in, in, in the reval period? Correct, no. unless there's something material. That, that, if, if we change the assessment for, for some reason, then they could come back. If there's a new owner, they could come back. But uh, barring any unforeseen changes, one shot in the five-year reval. So, okay, okay. We will send you, we'll send you the updated documentation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.
I will return shortly. See, there's nobody in the waiting room. I can start making some calls and get people coming yeah. in here. You, um, Shelby, sometimes we lose you. Um, oh. I, yeah. I don't know why that is. You, you go in and out. I got to have to buy a microphone for this thing, I guess. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, in in the sentence, you're 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 good, and then you fade, and then you come back. You know, so I don't. It sounds like you you don't move anywhere, but it sounds like you go away from it and then you come back, but you don't uh, really. Yeah. All right, I'll be back. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. Am I supposed uh, to be able to see you? You should be able to. Um, am I supposed to be able to see you guys as well? <laughs> I'm on a phone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on a uh, phone too. We only know that you're, you're um, caller three and caller four. You um, Maybe... I'm not sure if from the phone you you uh, you can see or not. Angela? So this is okay. her, yeah. So who uh, who's caller three? You know, Robert Cordova. Okay. All right. So caller three, we're gonna we're gonna go um, with next, and then. Um, What was call it for is is oh Angela, okay. Then we'll go. Then we'll go with you. So let me find uh, Robert Cordova. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hearing number twenty twenty. Dash one six two. Robert Cordova Jr. I'm yeah. going to swear you in. So I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So this is Express Gutters. LL. What market value yeah. do you apply to the? The personal property, you have $1,500. Didn't get the yeah. 2020 personal property affidavit submitted in time. This is my first time owning a business. Um, so you have original cost of $2,000, depreciated cost of $1,500. Uh, the town because you didn't file uh, put an assessed value of the property at $5,000 and because you didn't fi file, there's a 25% penalty. That's a state statute uh, penalty. Um, okay. So, File the 2020 declaration with appeal. Uh, Mr. Jackson, because he filed, even though he's filed late, um, and he filed with a with a value of $1,500, actual value. Um, how does how does that affect uh, what? Uh, he was assessed that by the by the assessor's office. All right, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. There's another appellant on the phone. I missed the first part of your question. I missed the first part of your question, Tom. Correct. We we uh, the town uh, has his assessed value of equipment sixty two fifty based upon 
estimated startup cost. Uh, <clears throat> but since he's filed uh, <clears throat> the declaration at $1,500, What would be up to the board to determine, you know, if they if they want to go with our estimate or with his actual filing? Um, my only question is, what if, does he have a, one of those seamless gutter machines, and what is the cost? What's the value of that? Yeah, that. Uh, if, I, if I'm able to talk, then I can explain that if you'd like. Correct. You you are you are able to talk. No okay. Problem. That that's actually what I do have is a seamless gutter machine, which I did buy used. And that's what a thousand dollars of the 1500 went for. I was, what had happened was I bought that machine when I started the business and I bought that off of Craigslist for $1,000. The other 500 is from the equipment that I bought. <clears throat> Do you have any receipts for that? I mean, that for the for the machine that I that I purchased for the, for the gutter machine. I bought it off Craigslist. It was it was a, a Craigslist ad that was on there when I had started. I had just purchased it. I didn't get the only thing I had gotten was a bill of sale, which I had brought down when I had gotten the the gutter machine established with DMV. They had just told like the date and the time that I had bought it for showing that there wasn't anything on there, like a actual like receipt from a store or anything. Is is this is registered with DMV because it's a trailer? Is that why? Is that, yeah. Is that what you're yeah. Mr. Chairman, you know, we've assessed it based on our estimate 6250, including a penalty. If you if the board wants to consider what was actually filed. Be an assessment of 2100, including the penalty. Can you can you just repeat that? Um, the 2100 is 2100 includes the 25 percent penalty. That's based upon the 1500 dollar declaration and a 25 percent penalty. Yes, that's correct. You know, again, um, thousand dollars for a gutter machine seems like a uh, extremely good price. Um, it was extremely used. <laughs> I it's about twenty two years old, I believe. I mean, it's I literally got this as a startup business for myself, it's my first business, and I mean, I've had nothing but trouble with it anyway, seeing as I couldn't even work for 90% of COVID when I opened my business. Um, and the and the remaining $500 is what? Miscellaneous hand tools, ladders? If you got a thousand in the gutter machine, you got $500 in. Correct. Did we lose you? No, you you're muted. Oh, no, you're not. No, how come? Uh... Hey there, Robert. Cordova, can you hear us? Hello. 
The screen said that he left. Whose screen? <laughs> Our screen. He'll probably try to get back in. <clears throat> So again, um, Mr. Jackson, when we're, we're talking about this assessed value, you, we have been putting them down as market value. So uh, correct, is that where the personal property has been? Yes, well, we made an estimate based upon similar other property, other Hello? About businesses. Hello? Yeah, I heard you guys the whole time. For some okay. reason, it kicked me out. I heard you guys asking if I was here. I heard everything of what you guys said. I never hung up. I only hung up when you guys couldn't hear me after that. Okay. Yeah, you're still you're still show here as uh um what I was ex what I was explaining before it went muted is that with the tools that I had gotten, I had gotten two ladders received from family. That was that and then the rest of the DeWalt tools was from the 500 that I had told you guys. Those are the tools that I actually purchased. I didn't get because this is my startup business. I had family members give me tools such as um, two ladders. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we lost you a little bit. All right. I was saying, I don't know. It keeps saying muted and unmuted on my side. So somebody on that side muting or unmuting it. Because it, it comes up with somebody saying that, but what right. I was saying Could you was call in on another line because I've got another caller. That's yeah, he's not lining up with his name. That yeah, would have been probably the first call when I called, but I hung the phone up. This is my same number. All right, yeah, let me he's just caller, this he's caller seven now. Okay. Is it okay oh. for me to continue talking? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. So what I was saying was is that when I started the business, it was right before COVID. COVID came, I was given tape measures, two ladders, and a couple of other miscellaneous tools for my business from family members and friends that were helping me start up. The 500 is from what I purchased actually from Home Depot for tools. That was two screw guns, the charging ports, a couple of saws, pencils, and stuff like that. That's why it originated to 500 for the tools. Okay. Um, like I, I'm a single father and I live at my address that's located on my uh, business, 52 Claremont in Wallingford. That's why I thought when I had first read it, um, the paperwork that it came in, I thought that they were doing that because of the actual owner of this house, my landlord, because he has trucks and stuff too. So I didn't know if that's why they had made it such a bigger price compared to what mine actually is because i only have a small trailer the machine and a couple of tools i only did three jobs this whole year from being from covid and i never even knew that i could file for like the relief funds or anything like that i literally lost a lot of money that i invested in the materials this year and i like i really haven't made anything i did three small jobs and that was just me starting up this year. Um, I mean, like I said, that was just the tools and the trailer of which I purchased off of Craigslist from somebody who was in the business for over 20 years, and they bought two more trucks. That's why I was able to purchase the trailer with the machine for $1,000. Okay. Um. Okay, so <clears throat> I 
And that's also why I didn't know I had a file because like I said, this is my first time owning a business. I never knew that I had to like file a declaration. This is all new to me. You know, I'm 28. I've worked for companies my whole life. And this is my first year of going on my own. If I had known I had to file anything, I would have had it filed, which is why when I had the actual paper come to my house, I immediately filed it and brought it down to the town hall. I never received the first one. I didn't know how to go about filing and having a declaration and stuff like that. Otherwise, I would have had it done prior to, you know, this having to be done. Okay, uh, Mr. Jackson, so what you had said was the assessed value with the declaration and the penalty, the, the assessed value was $2,100. That That's correct? correct. That's correct. Okay. So um, the assessed value of $2,100 turns into a market value of uh, $3,000. You would pay the tax on the $2,100, which is your declaration plus um, the penalty, which is, again, penalty. state state statute. So you're looking okay. at a total here of approximately um, um, $60, you know. So do I hear okay. do I hear a motion? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the uh, the assessed value to two thousand one hundred dollars, which equates to a market value of three thousand dollars, with penalty. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you'll you'll be notified uh, by a letter from the assessor's office. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Okay, uh, next year. Make sure that you know when, the paperwork. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask. So when does that need to be in? Um, is it yearly by a specific time? Mr. Jackson, it's gotta be no, what, it's November? Each year by November 1st. The declarations are on uh, online on the town's website. We'll try to mail you one, but it is your responsibility to make sure it's filed properly. If you need help, give us a call. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate your guys' time. I'll make sure to have that for November of next year. Okay, thank All you. All right, thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful night. You too, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, um, so we have caller five. Um, um, five, please state Please tell us who you are. I don't know, am I five? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm five. It's Ruth Harris. Okay. Okay. So let me uh, let me just find your your paperwork. Sure. Uh, Ruth Harris. Okay, Ruth Harris, 44 Fair Street. Right. Okay, I uh, I am going to swear you in. I hear okay. solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Uh, this is personal yes. property. You have put a market value of $100 mm -hmm. on office equipment. Yes. Please, please tell us what. Uh, What's there? Um, I have, well, I do counseling. And so the only thing that I have there is a couch and a chair. Um, I have a small desk and I have um, an, a very old computer that I don't even use, but I have it there. Um, and I've been there for 35 years. The computer I've had for about 15 years at least. And the furniture I've had, some of it, um, the chair I've had for, geez, um, I'm going to say 20 years, almost since I moved to the, to Fair Street. And, um, so that's what I have. <laughs> okay. I, um, I had to, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, 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 uh, I, I think the town has it, um, assessed at $500. You have a market value yeah. of $100. You have it assessed at $70. Okay. All right. Oh. Fair enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I don't see any paperwork on the declaration um, of, of what the actual well, list of equipment is. Uh, you did file though, right? You you filed. I did. I did. I did. Yes, file. I brought it down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no paperwork here to. Hmm. I did bring it down. I dropped it off. Um, Oh gosh, a couple of weeks ago, she told me to make sure I had it in before Friday, and I did. I brought it the Thursday before that, you know, ending date. Mm -hmm. All right, this, this value five hundred. So we somewhere on file, we have we have paperwork that uh, has your list of equipment and it's assessed at $500. Um, and now, now you, uh, which is like $15 in taxes. Um, okay. So let's, do, do I hear a motion from the board? Um, do, do you see, uh, Mr. Is that you, Mr. Jackson, looking for a list? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So I'm just showing you what we have here for documentation, I guess. Yeah, I. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't see a list of you know. Yeah, I dropped it off. Um, I don't know what to say. I, I dropped it off. Yeah, we have it. It dropped off on March 1st. Okay. Okay. Yep. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. Good. So based upon that list? She declared $100 for this. She declared $100. Right. But it says the declaration doesn't include the computer or supplies as prior declarations. So um that, okay. That's, that's the notes I have. So that's what you have. Yeah, okay. Spoke with Mrs. Spoke with Miss Harris three one twenty one. And she filed declaration same day, but declaration doesn't include computer or supplies as prior declarations. Hmm. So I don't know. Well, um, I'm getting ready to retire, so I'm not buying a lot of stuff anyway. I'm just right. using so, up what I've had. Yeah, yeah. So when 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 we calculated this, this was based on prior declarations of five hundred dollars. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion from from the board? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman. No change. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay, we'll be we'll be notifying you, but again, your your tax liability is um like fifteen dollars. So Okay, that's fine. And I appreciate your time on it. Thank you very much. Next Thank year you. I'll get it in on time <laughs> if I'm still working. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay. Um, again, I, I'm caller six. I'm sorry. I'm not sure who who that is. Um, somebody unmute and and and. I'll I'll, I'll unmute. You. Tell me which one, and I'll unmute them. For caller you. six. Okay, you unmute. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, my name is Alejandro Ruiz. I don't know if I am on the number six. Okay. Alejandro is number six. I'll I'll get his name up in a minute. Number six. Hello? six. Uh, just let me find which. You know. What's the name of the uh, company? It's a Force Home Improvement. F O R T E. Okay. Yeah, because I on the list I don't have your name, so I just have that. Okay.
Okay. Uh, I, yeah, wait a minute. Force home. Okay, I did find it. I am going to swear you in. Mm -hmm. I hereby solemnly swear that the, des the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yeah. Um, force home improvement. You place a market value on your equipment of nineteen hundred and seventeen dollars. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah nineteen hundred dollars to click. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, because you did not file, there's a there's a twenty five percent penalty. Um, the town town estimated a, a value of three thousand one hundred and thirty dollars in assessed value, and that was 2,500 assessed and a $630 um, 25% penalty. So the total was Your tax, your tax to the town would be ninety-one dollars. Um, okay. Based, based upon that information, uh, but but go ahead, tell us tell us what your declaration, uh, you know, uh, entails. Um, you estimated, you know, nineteen hundred dollars. Um, we we estimated, you know, because we didn't have a filing from from you, so. Yeah, um, I'm sorry for that. It's my first time doing this. I I don't even know. I gotta do this. Uh, yeah, no, so no my, yeah, so my tools are like uh, basically I got two ladders and couple couple more ladders, um, planks, wood planks for the uh, I do roofing and repress roofing. So a couple tarps. I don't have nothing expensive. Okay. Uh, drills, uh, hammer. Uh, hand tools, no, nothing, nothing big. Um, do you, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, last year I don't work because the COVID. I was working with my, with my old company uh, full time, and um, I made like three or three jobs, two or three jobs last year. I hope this year is getting better and I can get more tools and everything. But the last year was really, really bad for me. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Let me just check a couple things. Yeah, no problem.
Okay. Um, you know, because of the penalty, we'll, we'll give you a little relief um, because you filed, you filed late, you, you know, we, we were just estimating. Do I hear a board member um, with a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the market value to $4,000 with an assessed value of 2800 Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we, we reduced the assessed value from 31, uh, 3130 to $2,800. That'll give you a little bit of relief. Next year, have any questions, come up to the town hall, go to the assessor's office. They'll help you file the paperwork. Uh, by November 1st, you know, it has to be filed. So uh, okay. you, won't, you won't incur the penalty. You have penalties on there that, you know, next year uh, won't, won't be there. So. All right. And, okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, Mr. Jackson, if you would unmute caller eight. Hello? Hello. Who, who am I speaking with? Angela. And your company is? Vanity Beauty Bar. Okay, let me uh, find that. Um, okay, this is hearing 2020-163, Vanity Correct. Beauty Bar, I'm going to swear you in. Okay. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. You have placed the yeah. market value of $4,620 on um, the equipment uh, at your business. Yeah. 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 Okay. Who, who else is speaking, just so we have that on the record? My business partner, Vanna Azari. Okay. I don't know why she's not on the paperwork. I did tell them when I called in about it. Oh, okay. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. As long as um, we know that it's um, Angela Grego and uh, say the name again. Banna, B-A-N-A. Okay. Last name Azari. Okay. All right. You're at, that's on record. So we know who, you know, you know is. Okay. is so. so go ahead. Um, currently the town... As a um, uh, market value, market price of fourteen thousand two eighty six. Yeah. Is that correct, uh, Mr. That's Jackson? What they yeah, with assessed value of twelve thousand five hundred. Assessed value of twelve thousand five hundred, including the penalty amount. So that is that is seventeen thousand eight fifty seven. Um, and you file the 2020 declaration with appeal, no supplies listed on declaration, leasehold improvements not declared, $6,000 in permits. Uh, mm -hmm. So this was a new, this is a new business? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so go ahead. Um, do you understand, you know, some of those items that the town, have you been to the top, the assessor's department and talked to them at all or no? No. Um, when we received the letter, um, you know, we called and spoke with somebody who said to send in an appeal and just to fill out the total cost of what our equipment cost us so we made a list of the things that we had in there 
we did purchase a lot of it from a salon on Instagram that we found that was going out of business. The owner was advertising that her salon was going out. So we went and looked at what she had there. We bought used equipment from her. And then, you know, we bought the uh, the sinks and like the mirrors from Ikea, nothing crazy. So right. that's the, you know, when we went through our equipment and we <coughs> wrote down what it is that we have in there, that's what we wrote down and sent in to you guys. And this is our first year, so. Yeah, we never even received anything back in November, which I did call and explain to the woman at the assessor's office when I, you know, when we got this letter, she said that something was sent out to be due in November, but we never even received that. Okay. Um, so maybe Mr. Jackson could explain to you uh, um, things uh, that in your startup year is affecting, you, you know, the value here. So $6,000 in permits, Mr. Jackson, could you explain what that is and, and um, we can hear from the appellants. Sure, Mr. Chairman, so, so that would be uh, leasehold improvements. And just to give an example, by way of example, so they listed a couple of sinks that they had bought, but you also need to include the cost for installation of the plumbing and, and you know, to make those sinks uh, operational for, uh, for, business, for business use. So that's just one example. Uh, so leasehold improvements and then of course they've listed out you know the mirrors their various uh, the beauty stations or whatever give me if i didn't call it the right name stations um mirrors. my um sorry not to cut you off but my fiance is a contractor so he did that work for us for no cost we pulled the permits with the town for the building permits and um to do that stuff but we didn't have to like pay out a pocket a pocket for that for like labor but we had to estimate we didn't know that part but you estimated the permits when you went to the town hall at six thousand dollars that it had a value of six thousand dollars you remember that if you filled in what no No, you didn't put a value down. What what you had to put a value down to, to know how much you, you were gonna pay for the building permit. Anytime we pulled like a permit it was like fifty dollars, I think like or a hundred dollars the most. That, Wait, that's are what you, you saying that's that? what you paid. And yeah. that was based upon how much you estimated the work was gonna cost. So if a if a contractor gave you a, a a value of four thousand dollars you know you would go in and say i'm doing four thousand dollars worth of work and you would pay pay for a, a permit based upon that number that that's all um okay you know you might have paid 50 bucks or 100 bucks um but that it's based upon you know how much how much you were going to pay to have that work done uh so supplies listed on decoration, uh, Mr. Jackson, supplies for stock in the um, uh, beauty salon products and care, uh, that is taxable uh, as personal property or, or no? Oh, yes, yes, but what's taxable, not the full amount, the average monthly supplies that are expended so for example if a business were to spend i'll make it simple twelve thousand dollars in the course of a year on supplies then we would divide that by 12 months and we would assess one thousand dollars for supplies the average monthly amount um 
And is there a penalty here also? Uh, I'm confused. I'm confused, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman, there is. So we've assessed $10,000 as an estimate and then assigned the penalty of $2,500 for a total of $12,500 assessed value. Okay, so what? Um, it didn't even cost us that much to open the business. Yeah, we're a little confused. This is the first time we do something like this. Correct, correct. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. So when you when you open the business and you have personal property, you have to file the declaration on, on the value of all those items. Okay. By November 1st. Okay. But we this, um sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We um signed the lease and it was November, correct? November of 2019. Yeah. So we didn't even like open until year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this th we would be talking about filing in November 1st of 2020. Okay. All right, so within within that year, you know, you you would yeah be, be doing okay. it. Okay. And and mm -hmm. you know you have um. You have the list of uh, furniture and fixtures, things of, uh, of that nature, uh, mirrors, chairs, stations, desk, lighting, shampoo, shank, sinks, uh, what have you. But there's there's some other costs associated, um, supplies, you know, as Mr. Jackson talked about. Um, um the value of of the installation um even though that you did not pay you know there's still value to the business with all of these things uh to be put together so but and then and then what happens is because you missed the filing the state statute says you missed the filing this year there's a 25% penalty. So the town, okay. the town is estimating the assessed value of ten thousand dollars, and then there's a twenty-five hundred dollar penalty. Okay. Now that's the assessed value. The assessed value is not what the market value is. The market value is the assessed value of 70% of the market value, all right? Because you be, what happens is you pay you pay the taxes on the uh, assessed value. So currently the town feels you have 14,000, um, $286, is that? Uh, in, in, well, so, so maybe I can help Mr. Currently, Chairman. Currently, yeah, $14,286 in market value items. And then, $14,000. So, You still with us? Are you happy? Yeah. We've, we've lost, yeah. What was your question? I, I'm just trying to explain. Okay. I, I can help a little bit, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? I can help out a little bit if you want. Okay, sure. So if we take what they declared after the fact, uh, based on their actual cost, add to that the $6,000 of building permits and uh, an estimate of $350 for supplies. Um, the total assessment would be $9,260, which is a reduction from our estimate. This makes no sense to me. Okay. 
9260 with the penalty? Let me double check, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes, sir, is that includes anything? the penalty. That is with the penalty. Is there anything that you guys can do about this penalty since this is our first year? Unfortunately, the penalty is a state statute and um, we cannot, as a board, uh, override the 25% penalty. Uh, we, we can provide some relief. Um, so we're liable to pay 92.60? No, 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 no. No, at 92.60, That's the value of the property. About $270 in taxes, roughly. Yeah, times the mill rate, okay. Okay. That, we're just trying to determine the value that the mill rate, the mill rate is what's, you multiply times the value, that then equates to um, the tax. For every thousand dollars in value, the mill the the tax rate is twenty nine dollars and nineteen cents. So. Okay, and then every year um, moving forward, when we file this property tax every November, does it stay at that rate of ninety two sixty, or does that change because things depreciate? So it would change as things depreciate. You would add new okay. assets as you acquire them, and you would dispose okay. of assets as you dispose of them. Okay, so even if we get rid of something, we let you guys know. If we add something, we add something new. That's right. Okay, sorry, we're just making sure we understand correctly. And we're gonna get a bill for this, or? Is he said 270, right? So yeah, you send us a bill on the new assessment and what we owe. In June, you'll get a bill that will be due in July. That's correct. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You understand? Yeah, we understand. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, so if we use the assessed value of 9260, that has a market value of 13,228. Mr. Jackson, do, do you want something rounded off here? The the market value rounded off or just make the the motion based on the assessed value, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Go ahead, uh, board members. Make a motion to reduce the assessed value to $9,260. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and when, if, when you file on time next year, the 25% penalty will be removed also. Okay, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you so much, have a good night. You too, thank you. Mr. Chairman, can we identify, I think we've got two call, another caller, caller 10, I'd like to find out who that is because I know our chief appraiser has been trying to get into the meeting. Unmute caller 10 then. Would that be oh, me? I <laughs> just said unmuted. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, it would be Cobra Automotive, Virginia Blinn. Okay. Okay, okay Ms. Blinn, I'm gonna, un I'm gonna mute you again and just be patient. The chairman will call you when your appeal comes up. Okay, great. Okay, so, uh, why don't we go? Uh, I'm not sure who was next. Um, I think it was Thomas Rolfs. 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 Okay. Please unmute him then. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. So let me just find you here. You're uh, control, uh, control fluidics. Fluidics. So a uh, real simple one. I can give you a quick explanation. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, hold on a minute. Let me find you and swear you in before you get going too far. Oh, okay. No problem. You know, in front of me a little bit too much. Um,
Okay, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay, and uh, you have misclassified two manufacturing items. Correct. Uh, Mr. Jackson, do you know anything about this particular appeal? beforehand or no so let me bring you up to speed yes <clears throat> just give me one moment mr chairman if you would yep. My understanding is that the declaration was filed on time. Is that correct, sir? It is. That, but, but there was a mistake on the declaration on a couple of pieces of equipment that were uh, categorized as taxable. And now uh, the company is filing an amended declaration claiming that that equipment is exempt as manufacturing machinery. And the gentleman will correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're correct. It was a, uh, I moved it from section 10 to 13 because it has a uh, five or seven year depreciation schedule. Okay. And the, and the two pieces of equipment. Are uh, you saying? Go ahead. So sorry, it dropped. Uh, yeah, they're used in manufacturing or piece of manufacturing equipment purchased in uh, 2020. Okay. So Mr. Jackson, I mean, we're just changing the declaration. Is there a, this, this is a little different than what, than we, because, because of the misclassification. Um, so technically, they did not file properly on time, and therefore, you know, we we took what they filed as they filed. Okay. So what that means is you've lost the manufacturing exemption mm. for these two pieces. Is that is that correct, Mr. So Jackson? That's the action that we took, Mr. Chairman. But you know, he has his chance to speak to the board. And, okay, I've, you know, I've just tried. Of, yeah, I'm just trying to understand uh, whether he can change it or he he cannot uh, change it because it's already been submitted. Uh, so my authority ended on December 15th. It's now in front of the board. I think you have the uh, you know the discretion to go either way. <laughs> Okay, so let me go through this paperwork a little bit more. These are two uh, Haas machining centers, correct? Is that what you're? No, no. Um, they're no, two uh, inspection equipment, piece of inspection equipment. Oh, okay. a Barrett ABR and a uh, Brown Sharp CMM. Okay. There's a lot here, so I. I uh, and and the value of of those two pieces. Uh, one was you brought used at five thousand dollars. The second one was brand new at forty two thousand. Um, I can point to a stare at EBR three hundred is one of them, and the other one is the next down brown and sharp gauge. I 
honestly, it's the second time I've ever filled out your form. I did a good job on the first time, but uh, the second time I uh, made a made an error. The form is uh, difficult to uh, understand if you haven't done it a few times. I'll be better in the future. Yeah, most manufacturers, you know, have an accountant or someone else do it just to make sure they don't lose out on that exemption. Yeah, in this case, I'm a business owner and I did it myself. <laughs> All right, so let me just let me search through this paperwork a little bit more for something. We're new to town, growing company, trying to get used to uh, the local reg regulations. This is our second facility. We have one in New Hampshire as well. Okay, so so the current assessed value that is not exempt is thirty-two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. That's seventy percent of the value you've placed on those equipment. Assessment. Um, so, Mr. Jackson, in the recommendations here, it says filed amended twenty twenty declaration with appeal two thousand forty net assessment. sure what that uh, let me find that page page 42 okay. of the packet file the 2020 declaration with the appeal the, the net assessment of $2,040 so he's trying to correct his error by including those items as exempt under code 13, resulting in a net assessment of $2,040 instead of $32,350. Claiming it's a clerical error, that the accountant listed manufacturing items in code 10, which is taxable, instead of code 13, which would be tax exempt. Because of the filing deadline, we're recommending no change because we have no authority to to act beyond the December 15th uh, date. But the board does. I think so. <clears throat> if it uh, if interest to the board, um, our key product is medical devices that are used in medical equipment, in particular ventilators, and it's been a busy year for us. Uh, and we actually make uh, parts for a company in uh, Brantford, uh, biomedical devices, maybe, <coughs> excuse me, ventilators. So, uh, you know, we're growing, we've got a lot of opportunity. We hope uh, Wallingford uh, sees that in a positive light. <laughs> Okay, I um, um, do you feel inspection equipment is is that normally exempt? It's my accountant has it as a five to seven year uh, depreciation. Okay, I, I'm just asking that question because yep, sure. um, I I don't have exact knowledge of what falls in what bucket, but uh, 
you know, I, I think here uh, as the board, you know, you, you did file on time. I think your your best effort was in, um, you know, and you did file an amendment. Do I do I hear anything from the board? I think we allow the exemption to t uh, to take place. That would be my motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we're going to allow the the amendment to the declaration. Thank you. Greg. All right. Very good. Appreciate the help. Thank you. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, Mr. Assessor Rodolfo, I think was probably Rodolfo next. Rodolfo right? yep. So, um, okay. Good evening. Good evening. This is uh, Corello's painting. Yeah, it's me. Okay, let me just find you here. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. You do? Excuse me. You agree? I can hear you. Yeah. You can't hear me? Yes, yeah, no, no, I can't hear you. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to swear you in. I hereby okay. solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. So you are being assessed um, uh, on a on a vehicle. Is that, is that what you're here for? Yeah, it's, yeah, just for that. That's not that's not accurate, Mr. Chairman. He's being assessed as a painting company. Not sure what the vehicle is all about. I'm gonna cross that out. Okay. This assessment is for twenty nine hundred and forty dollars for a, a business equipment as a painting company. So you you have a painting company that has ladders and equipment and, and uh... um, actually the first time when I opened this business I supposed to be working with this company but I can't get it, get it, any jobs in that time. And then we're not working with this company anytime. I just keep the company the business because I I have my cars on the on the business company. And then we're not making any money with this company. I'm working for another company. Okay, but you the company is still in business, right? No, no, I'm not in business. We're not doing any business for the company. But, because but, everything but, but, everything I have it before. I give it to the company I work now. Let me chime in, Mr. Chairman. He did file on time and he filed zero for assets. And our staff in the assessor's office placed an assessment of 29, I'd say 2940, 940, based upon an estimate. Uh, he does still show the uh, the business is being active with the Secretary of State's office, and of course, he has vehicles registered in the name. That's how we picked him up. Okay. Um, so now you filed dissolution of the LLC, but last last November it was still still in business, correct? No, hardly. I mean, the company it's active, but I'm not working with the company. Is I, the company I just have, in name only, not exactly just the name only. But we're not doing any work for that company. Do you have still have assets, ladders? Nope, nothing. nothing. I like uh, everything. I sold everything ten years ago.
Um, and he has have, he has this other company as of March first, apparently. Say that again. I'm I'm sorry, Mister. So he has filed with the Secretary of State to dissolve the company as of March first. Yes, I do that because we're not using the company. <clears throat> Do I do I hear more motion from the board? I just want to have a question. The uh, the assets that there are no assets remaining under the company that at all. Nope. I didn't making any money with this company for the company. Mr. Chairman, let me make a motion to cancel this account. Yes, I I cancel the the company. So the, the motion is to cancel the uh, assessment on the on the assessed company test account. Yeah. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we're not you're you're uh you've dissolved the company and uh, you will um uh, have no uh tax responsibility uh on the company uh based upon this appeal. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think Virginia Blinn, uh, if we could, I think she was next. So if you're going to unmute her. Hello, I can, okay, I'm unmuted. Okay, what company are you? Cobra Automotive. Cobra Automotive. Okay. Let me just find sure. paperwork. Uh, okay, so... Okay, so Cobra, Cobra Automotive, Kurt Vogt. Um, Correct. And you are? Virginia Blinn. And you are w within the organization. Um, are you an owner? No, I'm his administrative assistant, bookkeeper, insurance, I had jack of all trades. And he sent an email today to your office giving me permission or telling you people that I had permission. And we did the email that. Went okay, office. all right, that's that's fine. I'm just I that's fine. Mr. Jackson confirmed that. That's all. Okay. So I'm gonna swear you in. Okay. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. So uh you've placed no market value on the on the property that you're appealing we have so we have no idea what you feel it's worth and uh, i sent no no I, I i sent from our accountant it was sent to you in october and then again it was faxed over and along with the email today you have a proof of the fax that the fax was received by your office that this assessment this was the application and was sent by our accountant's office. But, Do you? but I'm looking I'm looking at your appeal and you did not fill in that market value. So I, I'm reading the appeal. That's all I'm reading. Oh. I'm not reading anything else. What market value does the applicant place on the property? You left it blank. 
I, this oh, is the, gosh, I have no know. idea what, no. <laughs> this is the, this I told is him the, I didn't want to do this. I have no idea. Um, I mean, what there, I've got is. There. I, I'm just saying you're, you're appealing to the board, right? And I have no data to work with because you didn't fill in the, the main, the main item. All right. So let me, okay. let me work with you to figure out where we are. Okay. Okay, because I'm looking at this page five. You know, I've got all, I've got the pages from the accountant, so I don't even know where they get that line from. That's why I don't do this. I just send it to the accountant and then send it to you guys. Okay, because <clears throat> because the value. Excuse me. That um, we have here. All right is the market value is $21,486. Furniture, fixture, and equipment, $2,514. Mechanics tools, $5,843 for EDP equipment, $2,400 for supplies. And because um, for whatever reason, it, it was not registered as being in the, the town hall by the due date. There is a state imposed state statute penalty of 25%. So that's, that's where we are. And um, right now, the total value is uh, $32,243 of market value that uh, uh, in turn is uh, $28,210 of uh, assessed value. So so at least now I've established where, you know, what the value is because the appeal doesn't doesn't say, all right? Okay. Okay, so now 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 go ahead tell us you know, I I've read some of this Kurt signed original on 10/2020 mailed 10 26 or 10 26 20 um correct is that you is that and if you, you go back in history you can see every year it's done by our accountants and you people get it on time that's why i had no idea that you never even received it okay normally what i do is i send it certified this year i don't know why i was out with cancer and i came in it needed to get done so i just sent it i didn't send it certified this year so you know i was shocked when we got the um you know, the important, the notice of change and all of that for the assessment. I said, wait a second, that, you know, we're being penalized because you didn't get this. But, you know, I sent it and I, and that's why I'm appealing it. Yeah. Um. You know, I can't help that it. it got lost in the mail somewhere. There's a lot of mail I haven't gotten. I, you know, I just... <laughs> But it taught me, I'll tell you what, it taught me a lesson. It will go certified from now on. Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, but like I said, I, I'd been out with cancer and I came in and it was due and I just sent it. And as soon as I got, you know, your letter in the mail, I faxed it right back over. Yep. <laughs> So it looks like um, they have filed on time every other year. Uh, it looks like we've we've uh, added the penalty uh, this year um, to it. Um, is that is that correct, uh, Mr. Jackson? That uh, that's correct. They filed faithfully every year. Never yeah. had a hitch and. This yep. year, she, the, the, the woman is correct. We've had problems with our mail. Um, that it wasn't sent certified. Yes, I've sent checks out to vendors that have never been received by the vendors cost a fortune this year to put stop payment on them because I don't even know where they went.
But like I said, and, and Mr. Jackson said, I mean, we file faithfully every year. And I have an accountant do it because I don't understand all of this. And it's the same accountant that we've had for years. Who, who mailed it in? Him? Uh, no, I did when I came back. No, they send it. They send it to me. They FedEx it to me or UPS it to me from Hamden to Wallingford, and then I get it. And you know, we've got to sign it. And I just stuck it in a Cobra Automotive envelope, a big envelope, and just mailed it. I didn't have time to go to the to the um, post office to get a certified letter. I said, I'll get there. It's Wallingford. It's the same town. Where is it going to go? Oh, yeah. I'd still like okay. to know where it is. You know, by looking at, at your your history, what have you, I, I think uh, the board can, uh, y you know, make a motion concerning uh, uh, we can't take the penalty off, but we can, we can reduce the... Uh, the value of the assessed property and put the penalty back on it because uh, the penalty is a state statute that we are prohibited from uh, removing. So do I hear anything from the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reduce the assessed value to $19,500 plus penalty. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So what's the total assessed value with penalty, Carl? So assess value that brings it to a market value of twenty seven thousand eight fifty. Round it off to the nearest uh, whole number. Uh, hang on, I, let me Just, double check that, Mr. Bonamico. Nineteen five times one point two five. Twenty four three seventy five assessed value. Is that? 24, 370 or 380, round it off. So 20, 24, 380 as the assessed value. Yes, sir. All right, so 24, 380. Let me repeat the motion. Please. With, with penalty, reduce the uh, the assessed value to twenty four thousand three hundred eighty dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we helped you a little bit. Uh, okay, so what happens with that twenty five? I can't believe the state has no provision for something lost in the mail. No, you know what? I really shouldn't be surprised. Um. <laughs> That, that, so does that, on, now I heard you know, tell someone know. else, does that 2,500 come off next year? Yes. Or something? I. 25% penalty will not be assessed next year. As long as you put it in a certified. You know, right, no, absolutely. Drop, all right. Or, or okay, drop so, it off. So, yeah. or get a if you get it on time, I won't be assessed. But this, this is a 25, is it a $2,500 fee fine? 25, 25%. Fee. 25% fee. Okay. Okay. Sorry, hang on. Give her the value. Um, so you got, what was it? 24380. 24, About $140. How much? Okay. It's about $140. Penalty. Approximate late fee. Okay. But we also did roll back the assessment a little bit to uh, offset. Right. You rolled the assessment back to 24 rather than the 28. Correct. And I want to make sure I'm understanding this. Correct. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, call our 11, I guess. You would unmute him. Okay. Caller 11, could you identify yourself, please? Hello? Yes. I, I didn't know what caller number I was. I apologize. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, Eric Higgins, Gen X Motors. 
Okay, let me just find your, your paper. Okay, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do, so help me God. Okay. All right, so... Uh, All right. You place a market value on the property at five thousand one hundred and eighty-nine dollars with a question mark. So I did because, as you can see with my attached letter, we had an accountant who we we claimed gross negligence against for the last four years. Um, I'm the one who submitted the first property tax assessment in 2017, and he has done nothing since. Our new accountant has suggested that I follow up with uh, this year's, you know, follow up with you trying to straighten it all out. And here we are. Okay. Okay. So I mean, what happened? Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I, I'm just, so you have not filed since 2017. Is that? Uh... That's correct. And I know the, the 25% increase each year, I only found about that this year when we got a letter from the town, which is what prompted my action. So I reassessed what we had, and then it came back um, with a higher assessed value on one of our vehicles that we have. And that's the, you know, apparently that's a, a higher assessed value than what I had placed on it. So that's why I'm, that's why, uh, I'm here. Okay, so the buildup of assessment and penalty, we're, we're currently at $8,110. Okay. All right, that's, is that correct, Mr. Jackson? That's, that's where we are today? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So let's... That's a tax liability of $236. That's that's where you are right now. And that will clean up the last four years of penalties and, and assessment, correct? Okay. The, the, oh, I'm fine with that. The only concern I have is the the truck that I claimed is coming up at – with an NADA value of $7,500 and we bought the truck for $2,000 and it's, you know, it's just a rusty piece of shit that we use as like a, a run around truck that is now rusting into the ground with 280,000 miles on it. So, you know, my only, to be honest with you right now, I mean, that, that, that's a, you have not a filed an appeal, right? That's not involved in this. Correct, Mr. Jackson? No, no it is, Mr. Chairman. It, it is. is. If you look on the declaration under code nine unregistered vehicles, so it's a vehicle that they use, probably puts a dealer plate on it. The gentleman could better explain it. Um, yes. We have it as unregistered. Okay, but so you're not paying, you're not, you're not uh, in the assessed value of $8,110 does not include seven, right? Uh, that's correct. It does not include that. If we included the actual NADA value, his his assessment would go up from the eighty one hundred, not go down. Correct. That's that's what I'm saying. Right now, the truck is not part of this assessed value and your appeal. I mean, <clears throat> well, my appeal was that our accountant never filed yearly, so that we went up twenty five percent every year. Every year that he didn't file. So I, I reassessed what we had and I sent it in. And to my understanding, the truck was what put us over our automatically assessed value. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same page. I'm, I'm happy to pay whatever we owe, but I want to make sure that we're clear on we're on the same page. Well, you're, you're claiming $3,632 in assessed value. 
on on the okay. personal property. All right, mm -hmm. today. But if you backed up yes, four years and put twenty five percent on all of that, you're at eight thousand one hundred and ten dollars. Again, your tax liability to clean this mess up is two hundred and thirty six dollars. All right. I don't think you want to bring the truck. I don't. You know, the, and right now the truck's not part of this. I don't. Not sure. You know, if if you want to do something about the truck. You're not, I don't want to do anything about the truck. <laughs> I received a call we're not, from from the Mr. Jackson. We're not really doing anything with the truck either, right? Are we or, or are we not in this appeal? Not in the eighty one hundred and ten dollar assessment. No. No. So I'm I'm gonna you know you know have the board make a motion to you know ba based upon the recommendation of the assessor's office that. Your current assessment is eight thousand one hundred and ten dollars for for a price of two hundred thirty six. Yeah, you know, taxes. Um, okay. My my only thing was I received the phone call from the tax assessor's office saying this truck brought up all of our tax value, our our, pro, our personal property value, and to contest that. That's why I'm here. I'm I'm happy to pay the two hundred thirty six dollars. I have. I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not being overcharged for a, a crappy truck that we have. That's all. Um, uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm happy to don't pay see that in here, right, Mr. Jackson. Oh, correct, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I, uh, I would take a no change and, and pay the tax bill and uh, Mr. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Chairman, board members, I appreciate your time. I'm happy to pay the two hundred thirty six dollars. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion uh, to uh, make no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You'll Thank you for your time. Work. Uh, from the town. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Has anybody been keeping track? Is that is that everybody? That is everybody, Mr. Chairman. Ruth Harris, uh, did she have two pieces of property or one? Well, it was one property, but there were two names on the appeal, so it's it's all done. That the one, uh, okay. one appeal with two names. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess the next the next meeting is uh, Monday. Monday, Wednesday of next week. Do we need Thursday and Saturday of next week, or you don't know? Yeah. I believe we do. Yes. And Saturday. Correct. Okay. So we're Monday, trying to avoid we were trying to avoid the Saturday and things spilled over. Um, and I'm a little bit confused because like tonight's agenda, I thought it was rather light. We could have gone another hour or so. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we're working with at this point. Yeah, that's um, yeah. I'm just I'm just you know. Rereading the schedule, whatever, whatever, however it gets scheduled is is okay with me. Yeah. You know? My I'm understanding here. is all the dates that we selected are full. Okay. Oh. Even into the even into the third week. The the. Uh, uh, I mean, we have seven more seven more meetings. Are we gonna? <clears throat> Are we full in seven meetings? I believe so. Why don't you call me in the office, you know, tomorrow, and I'll confirm okay. everything. Uh, but my understanding is yes. Now, what I've done is I've settled quite a few. Okay. Uh, so we've we've collapsed the, uh, several of them, you know, to reduce the, the the reduce a couple of those agendas. But then what I'm doing is I'm going to fill in with other uh, properties that were over a million dollars that have now been resolved. 
Okay. Whatever, whatever the scheduling is, you you know, um, you want to do. I just and and you know what, Mr. Chairman, the only thing I can say is some of the personal property takes a little bit longer than than maybe a residential, something like that. That you give us enough time to work through some of these because they're um, a little harder right. sometimes to explain and. In work yeah, with. I just I just thought of it. Shelly's on the line. I mean, she's she's got all the agendas. She could speak to the question better than I could. Okay. Um, I do. I do not have the agendas with me right now, but um, all of the dates are pretty well booked. Saturday is very light, so maybe it would take an hour. Okay. Ops, there's not a lot on Saturday, but after that, I mean, there's like 194 cases appeals. Total for the really? Yes. So what do we we're uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. Well, fifteen a night. Ten nights, yeah. Ten ten. Okay, I mean uh, again, whatever whatever it takes, uh, is fine. Saturday morning is, is fine. Um you know, doing it from home certainly is efficient you know timing wise i can wise. provide virtual coffee and donuts mr chairman <laughs> if that'll help great for my diet <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you um you know uh, i think we're we're ironing out some bugs still but um uh, uh I think we're doing all right virtually here. So, very good. All right. So, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See you. See you next time. <laughs> Take care.